The tour. Now, I don't know about any of you if you're involved in economic development, but I think I'm a tour guide. Basically, what I do is people come to my office and they, uh, they want to see this or that. And I think that this is probably where the rubber meets the road, the tour. That when you have a tour and if you think it's real, I just can't encourage you to be too prepared. Prepare your story. This is Phil Terry, the president of Monarch Beverage. He came with all his executive team for the tour. We were told we were 12th out of 12 properties being considered. They were just doing it as an accommodation. Two things, I did a little research. Uh, through some accident, the founder of this company, Monarch Beverage, is a neighbor of mine, long dead, but I knew the story. I would sit with Mr. French uh, and we would talk and there was an interesting guy who ran an industrial laundry company but he liked to throw parties so he created this huge party house and he suddenly discovered an opportunity to distribute beer he bought into it and now it's Indiana's largest beer and wine distributor and one of the country's largest beer. so I could talk to them about Mr. French, the background I knew that distribution, they just Distribute, distributed the beer statewide. So I talked about the five interstate accesses, the new nine lane pendulum pipe going in front of their, their business. Just tried to hit their hot button. Um, and uh, we didn't get thrown out. So that was the, the first step. Uh, what is the next slide? But Right away, they came and said, <clears throat> we got problems. Now, any of you who aren't in cornfields, if you have an existing pro site, you have hair on it. It's going to be bad. This thing was a disaster. These are wetlands. This is sitting right in the middle of the building. Uh, there was three or four other wetlands. <clears throat> the first thing is they said, we don't want to take environmental risks. So we said, we will. And we became the applicant on the remediated wetlands almost from the beginning. What we agreed to do, and I think I have a slide coming in here, but basically we remediated the wetlands by building two linear parks down each side and creating new wetlands, uh, eventually getting title and taking the environmental risk. Environmental risk, is overblown, I think. Uh, we were comfortable with our environmental advisors, but business don't, they don't like to take risks, especially environment, they can visualize a bottomless pit. Of, so anyway, we said, we'll do it. So that got us further down, maybe to eight or something. Let's see what the next slide is. Zoning. This was a zoning report, but it wasn't zoned quite right. We need to do some modification. So we agreed to take the lead, not entirely, they had their own attorney, but we shepherded them through the modification to the zoning that we got done process. Again, taking the, the fear out of them that, that we were, they were on our back, so to speak, we worked very much like a partnership. We would often have all the advisors in a room and talk, and, and we were just like a, a teammate to them, uh, not adversarial, just working together toward this goal. But some of the advisors, one was a, a company called Duke, which is a REIT in Indianapolis, who had their own site, and it really scared us to death. They were the contractor, but they were also trying to sell them a site in competition with us and we're trying to figure out where that went and uh, always scared to death. Okay, where are we next? Public safety. As I said, 
the, there's a high crime area to our south. I had to convince them that when they moved here that they wouldn't lose a million cases of beer a day. It was, I mean, really the, the, the imagination of high crime. Uh, and it was, so I did a lot of studies. I did a study that really helped. This is my city. These are more affluent. They're not viewed as high crime areas. And I showed that we're much more similar to these other cities than Indianapolis. And it's really sort of interesting. We literally almost patrol our southern border to, to not let crime come over. That we, we give a lot of traffic tickets. You'll always see red light, bubble gum machines flashing down there. But they just want to know they're coming into my city, that we have tougher crime standards, more policemen. So anyway, we got to that hurdle. I mean, this is, we are just doing one hurdle at a time. Okay, we wonder what do we do next? Tax abatement. In Indiana, we have 10-year tax abatement. We had a property, the drive-in theater was vacant for 20 years. The horse track site was vacant for 10. They paid just no property. We, there's no property tax there. We, we felt we didn't have much to lose. So we agreed to support and fight for 100% tax abatement in the first year, and the way Indiana works, it ratchets down to the 10th year is 10%. But further, we agreed that we would capture this increase and give it back to them. Uh, so let's see. Oh, OK, then we'll, we'll go back to the, the math of this. They also had to have a traffic signal. They had, it's been, so, I think, 200 semis going in on a day. They had to have a traffic signal in front of it on Penland Pike. And I don't know about your dot, but dots they're all about traffic flow. Once they get this magic traffic flow created up and down the street, if you do anything to interrupt it, it's, it's a major, you ought to have seen when I first went in and said we want a traffic signal. They almost threw themselves on the ground. And, uh, 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 they really did. I mean, this was a yeah. trauma, you know? So I got legislators involved. I got everybody involved. Finally got it. I had to pay for a traffic study. Then across the street, the, there was a trailer park. It didn't line up, so I had to go to the private owner and build him a whole new entrance. And that was sort of fun. I built him a traffic signal with a whole beautiful new entrance, and I sort of suggested he could help me with the money. You know, it's wrong, oh, no. So I ended up paying $350,000. Uh, an interesting thing, since we divided our TIF, we used the TIF outside of Monarch to pay for this. We had a million dollar ban is what was sort of our um, money, mad money we could play on, on all of Penland Pike. 